Welcome to the Otimo CIO podcast, where we bring you insights, strategies, and stories from the brightest minds in IT leadership. I'm your host, Raja Gudepu, and in each episode, we explore how today's CIOs and CTOs are not only driving innovation and shaping the future of technology, but also mentoring and inspiring the next generation of IT leaders. If you're navigating digital transformation, integrating cutting edge solutions, or seeking guidance to grow as an IT leader, this podcast is for you. Let's dive in. Today, I'm very excited to welcome Liz Moore, the CIO of uh, Ladies Professional Golf Association, also known as LPGA. Uh, as a recreational golfer myself, and uh, with our company, Otimo, proudly sponsoring the upcoming Solheim Cup, uh, having Liz on the show is truly special. Um, if you're passionate about technology, sports, and especially golf, this episode is a must listen. We'll dive into Liz's inspiring journey to becoming a CIO and a leader in technology, explore the latest trends in sports and golf, and uncover how technology is driving success in the sport. There's so much to discuss, so let's get started. Liz, welcome to the show. Thank you, Roger. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. So Liz, your journey is unique, um, blending both technology leadership and legal expertise as the CIO and Chief Legal Officer of the LPGA. Uh, can you start by sharing what initially drew you to this intersection of technology, sports, and law, uh, which is so common, right? <laughs> and how that diverse path led you to your current role? Yes, I. Um, it, it's been a rather interesting path, as you can imagine, as interesting as that um, you know, collection of, of expertise and, um, and responsibility is. It's very unique. Um, I started with the LPGA a little over 10 years ago um, as the chief legal officer and um, in that role worked with an, all the different disciplines around the LPGA. Um, at that time, we had a very small technology team and over, the, over that decade, I would say, we have really invested in technology and made it a point of emphasis in our strategic plan. And so through my work with the other departments here, um, I think they recognized that I had a particular passion around this space. We've seen how important technology has been in sports, how it's really put properties on the map. And as a, um, as a niche sport, um, you know, golf on the, on the broader landscape, we recognized how important technology is to putting us on the map with other properties and leveraging technology could really grow the organization. So I really kind of raised my hand and said, um, this is something I want to do. This is something I think can advance the LPGA. And um, the commissioner gave me the opportunity to do that um, and have had a, a wonderful experience working with our technology team. And, and learning about all of this new technology that's entering the sports space. That's that's very fascinating. And and as someone who navigates both the technological and legal landscapes in a major sports organization such as LPGA, what are some of the biggest challenges you face in balancing these two roles? Hmm. Well, um, we had there's obviously a. Um, a pretty technology touches everything so there's a very wide variety of, um, of issues to be thinking about whether we're talking about our infrastructure and our operating systems whether we're talking about um, golf technology that impacts and drives our competitions or whether we're talking about the technology that supports our broadcasts and our production and and what the fans experience and see and then um, certainly as a global tour we have cybersecurity risks that we have to manage regularly. Um, we have issues of um, really making sure that we're operating efficiently while we're playing all around the globe in a number of different countries. And so leveraging technology and implementing technologies that can help our teams be efficient um, are incredibly important to, to just running the tour on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and you in, in your role, uh, just to unpack that, uh, that line of uh, you know, thought a little more, and in your role as the chief legal officer of LPGA as well, how do you, how do you balance those two roles? Like, you know, does one, is, is one role more demanding than the other or are they pretty complementary once you get to a certain state? 
I think what's interesting is that they they are rather complementary. That there is an el a legal element to everything we do, um, regardless of the area of technology that you're talking about. Um, we have obviously there are privacy and security matters that we have to manage. Um, how we exchange information, what information we share, our, our internal systems, um, securing those. We have um, agreements uh, related to our technology, how we can use our media and our content, which is you know, obviously an incredibly valuable asset to the tour. So it's understanding um, what you can and can't do with content and data, how to use it, how to protect it. And there's obviously a, a legal element to all of those things, whether it's regulatory or whether it's contractual and through our relationships with our partners. So I find that um, my legal team and our technology team work hand in hand and cross over in almost everything that we do. That's very interesting. And Liz, you mentioned cybersecurity and as, as we can imagine with the constantly evolving digital threat landscape, um, how do you prioritize cybersecurity within your organization and what strategies have you implemented to stay ahead of potential threats? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't think the importance of, um, of cybersecurity can really be overstated, um, particularly in our environment. I mean, we have um, some very you know, sensitive information in our systems. Um, as I said, our team travels all around the world. Um, so they're connecting to different systems. They're in different, you know, they're in different countries with different environments. Um, remote work. We have people that practically live on the road, spending 30 and 40 weeks a year on the road. So um, it's it, it's um, a very complicated environment in terms of the number of systems that we use and how we engage with them. And so securing all of them and really educating our team on how to, you know, be diligent. Um, is probably one of the bigger, biggest challenges. I think, you know, we can do everything uh, that we can from a technology team, but educating our teammates on how to be responsible about securing information, how to manage and interact with the systems, I think is, has been probably one of the most um, important things that we've done. We do regular training with our employees. We do regular tests with our employees. We're constantly monitoring our systems. We play all over the globe. And so um, it makes it really interesting when you're evaluating your systems to try to understand where, where logins have come from and you know who's in and out, who's in and out of systems and is someone actually in that country or not in that country. Um, you know, structuring things in an efficient way um, that's also manageable for us. We're we're a you know relatively smaller organization, and so being really smart. Um, about that area in terms of the resources that we use and um, and really how much we can afford to implement in an area that you really can't afford not to be, um, you know, thorough and complete. So I think we've, um, our tech team has done a, a fantastic job of keeping us current, constantly thinking about what and how we can do things more efficiently. Um, and, and I would say we just generally have a culture of responsibility around that area because of all the training and the emphasis that we've put on it with our, with our teams. That's fantastic. And, and taking, taking that line of, uh, our, you know, from cybersecurity to something beyond, you know, on a broader scale to technology, just generally in sports, uh, as we can imagine, technology is transforming every aspect of sports, including golf. Uh, at the LPGA, how are you leveraging technology to enhance the experience for players, uh, the fans, and the organization as a whole? Can you share some innovative initiatives or future plans that are particularly exciting for the world of golf? Yeah, I, I would say this is this is probably really what drove my biggest interest into getting involved with our with our technology team and and stepping into this role. Um, I think the impact of technology, well, I would say that technology has had the greatest impact on sports um, of any other element of the business uh, in, in the last five to 10 years. I mean, it, it is truly incredible what technology is doing to, um, to enhance and expand the experience for fans, um, for, for our partners, our sponsors, and for our athletes. Um, 
I think we, our marketing and brand and communications department is leveraging a number of different systems to understand who our fans are. As I said, we play all over the world. We play in 13 or 14 different countries every year. All of those cultures and fan bases um, engage with our sport in different ways. And it's implementing technologies to help us understand who those fans are how they want to receive content and then delivering our content in a way where they engage with us um, more deeply, more frequently. Um, it is bringing, um, capturing data and performance information. And we have tremendous partners um, in KPMG, for example, who has helped us develop a performance insights program to take all of that data and that statistical information from our competitions and transform it into insights that our players literally log in and use to analyze their own performance, their own games, and make changes. Um, providing that information to their coaches and their teams to help evaluate what's going on when they don't necessarily travel with them everywhere they go. Um, so impacting our, impacting our athletes, and then um, certainly the ability to leverage technology to be able to um, highlight our sponsors and our partners. Um, as well as just the infrastructure, you know, that, as I said, we have a team that's traveling around the globe, connectivity, um, staying connectivity, having access to information um, at any hour, regardless of time zone where you are, um, has been incredibly important for us. So I think mainly, you know, and, and as, a, as I know you're an incredible sports fan and a golfer, as you engage, you know, just think about your own experience as you engage with the sport to be able to watch um, a, a broadcast and a competition and understand exactly what's going on, whether it's the apex of that drive uh, that you can literally physically see through a launch monitor experience, um, the angle of the putt, um, you know, why that player hit the shot or why they're in trouble because of where that shot went, um, the ability to track all of that, display it and explain what you're seeing um, in a broadcast or, or on our website um, has has made that such a so much of a more robust experience for a fan. It's really elevated um, our total experience and, and our product, and all of that is through technology. Absolutely, yeah. I, I think over the last few years, just you know, asking a question of like, hey, I want to know what the shot does, or I want to see these highlights or key moments. I mean, a lot has advanced uh, on that front, and. You know, as, as streaming media and content becomes so much more prevalent, I think the audiences are, you know, losing, for lack of a better word, patience, right? Like everyone is impatient. You, you, want, you want information quickly. So, you know, the, it looks like the initiatives that you're, you know, putting in place with technology are going to be serving those, you know, those, those needs of, you know, your fans and players, right? Yes, I mean, I think as you know, you can turn on the television now and you can skip over a total game and just see the highlights. You know, what we want is for those people is for those fans to engage with us on a longer, you know, a longer term experience, not just the quick hits. We have those right. and we can bring those to you. But by incorporating technology throughout the broadcast, it's just a more robust experience. You understand what led to that big highlight moment and you want to dig in and see that. Um, so I, I think for us, um, technology, particularly golf, where not everyone necessarily understands the nuances of what you're seeing when you're seeing it, to have technology deliver that information in a way that almost educates the fan um, about the moment. What exactly is happening here that I might not other, otherwise understand if I'm not a golfer, for example. So bringing new fans into the sport, um, I think it's really allowed us to tap into people who you know, haven't necessarily understood exactly how the game is played or what's involved in it, because there's so much going on that you don't necessarily see from the naked eye if you're just watching a golfer hit shot. You mentioned performance insights, um, and it sounds like there is a lot of data analytics and you know, number crunching, you know, that, that your organization does, you know, for performance insights. So just elaborating on that, um, what role do you see, you know, AI playing in enhancing, you know, those insights uh, as, as 
you know, as the world becomes more and more, you know, uh, open to embracing AI. Mm -hmm. um, I, again, I think it's just another layer of engagement and, um, and making the experience more robust in terms of explaining what's happening and um, what could happen as a result of what just happened. Right. So it's also, it's those predictive things. So, um, you know, you, you have, if you hit your drive into a certain spot based on, you know, based on the experience and the way that course has been playing that week, um, what's likely to happen now and, you know, what is the, how, what are the different strategies that she could deploy now to put herself back into a better position? All of that is now possible based on this collection of data and analytics and then, um, you know, leading, leading you into that story, leading you into that drama. Um, I think it, with AI, there's, there's so much that's possible. Um, it's early days. I think, we, I think we're only, you know, barely at the tip of the iceberg on this one. Um, and so, you know, the ability to play out different storylines um, and then make some make some bets on those storylines, maybe, you know, what what could happen? It's, it's not a guarantee, but, um, you know, there's there, there's so many different ways um, that particularly in our sport um, that a particular hole could be played or that a round could, you know, could could um, could play out. And AI for us, I think helps run all of those different stories and um, and just create engagement to build the drama. That's exciting and and scary at the right time, right? Um, <laughs> because you know, it, so it sounds like um, in a few years, Liz, if I call you and say, hey, who is going to win this upcoming tournament? You should be able to click a button and say, yeah, based on all these factors, I think this person has a 90% chance of winning it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I see that for sure. And I think you don't want so many potential outcomes to be delivered yeah. that it becomes boring, right? Like you already know what's going to happen. The great thing about golf is, and I know you're a golfer, there's no way to predict the outcome. <laughs> it is a it is a tough, tough sport. Our athletes are phenomenal, but I don't ever see a world where you can guarantee how that little ball is going to make it in the hole at the end of the day, no matter how much AI you apply to it. Um, but I do think there's a lot that, uh, certainly a lot that it can do um, to help educate fans and um, to help inform them. You know, we're, you, we, we play all over the world. We play at different times of the day. It's difficult to, you can't always see us live depending upon where you're sitting, you know, in the world. And so um, there's a lot that happens in terms of storylines that can be built. And I think AI allows us to tell those stories and kind of run through a season. You know, we play, 32, 34, 35 events a year and AI to help connect all of that and, and, and bring those stories to life about an athlete, um, I think is a tremendous opportunity for us um, in a sport where we're not necessarily, you, you don't, you know, we play across four days, across an entire calendar year. Um, and so I think it, it helps connect those, it can help connect those dots for people, for fans, you know, who want to engage and understand what's this mean? Um, you know, in the grand scheme of the tournament schedule. The AI can do that for us. That's, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Um, you know, as, as we see the women's golf, you know, raising in popularity, we see women golfers, you know, alongside men, you know, there are one or two, you know, events that we see them play together and it's, it's, it's gaining a lot of momentum and traction. Um, can you talk a little bit about the collaboration that LPGA and maybe PGA has? Like, do you talk to your counterpart at the PGA? Do you guys collaborate on technology, innovation and, and such? Mm -hmm. um, yes, we, we absolutely do. Um, there are a number of different players, not just the PGA Tour, but the USGA, um, the RNA. You know, we, we just watched um, the, women's, uh, the Women's Open being played in St. Andrews. We, we have great partnerships in the industry. Um, we all talk to each other, you know, in the best interest of the game to do what we can to grow the game, to leverage um, all of the different assets that we have, you know, all of the different strategies and um, innovations that we're bringing to the game. 
um, across the landscape of the sport, really, really to grow the sport. We, we work, we have strong partnerships with, um, with all of our industry um, partners, whether it's you know, governing bodies or other tours, um, and not just in the U.S., but around the world. And it sounds like, you know, for, for someone in your role to be successful and, and, and be impactful to the organization, uh, that emphasis on partnership and collaboration uh, is needed. It, it's absolutely needed. Um, again, we're seeing um, wonderful attention uh, being given to women's sports um, today, which is very exciting for us. Um, We've been big fans of women's sports for a long time. As you, as you know, 75 years. Uh, we're coming on our 75th year anniversary is the oldest running women's professional um, sports property on the globe, um, on the planet. Um, we are very excited about the attention that women's sports um, is getting today, but it's not always been that way. And we have absolutely um, leaned on uh, and looked to our partners to support us, um, I, we're obviously we're in sports, and so sponsorship um, is a major, you know, driver uh, and underpins almost everything that we do. Thank you um, for being a, a partner and sponsor and supporter of the Solheim Cup this year, by one as one example. But we work with, um, we have, you know, very kind of organic relationships with our partners. We work with um, most of our sponsors in in some way or another. Um, to help support and, and fuel the organization. We, we collaborate with, um, with our industry partners and peers. And again, as I mentioned, you know, we're, we've been around for 75 years, but on the landscape of sport, still a relatively small property in terms of the size of our team, but with a very uh, global footprint, leveraging partners, um, sponsors, vendors, uh, and, and industry peers has been critical to allow us to to grow to the level we are today and to be around for the full 75 years. That 75 years, I did not know that data point. That's very really insightful and, you know, huge kudos to LPGA for that milestone. Uh, so just shifting, you know, gears a little bit, Liz, uh, during your last decade at the LPGA, uh, what major changes have you observed uh, and how has the organization embraced you know, agility and emerging technologies to stay competitive. Um, and how do you ensure LPG leads in innovation and industry standards? And, you know, the last 10 years have brought in lots of changes, right? So um, what, what are your insights on that? How has, how has the landscape changed? I think when I, um, I would say when I first started here, um, you know, technology wasn't even in the top five list of strategic initiatives or, or focus points. Um, but in the last five years, it's moved to the top of the list. Um, I mean, again, we've talked a little bit about how important technology has become in sports. I, mean, I think all sports properties are now technology companies in some way um, and are leaning in, whether that's to tell the stories of the athletes or to tell the stories of the competition that's happening um, in front of you or to tell the stories of their partners and, and sponsor supporters. Um, I think for us, we were uh, underinvested in technology, uh, at the same time had a considerable amount of technology debt, uh, and we were not leaning into technology from a competition perspective. Um, you know, there are a lot of traditions in golf. Um, it, golf is a, is a very storied um, uh, sport that's been around for a, a long time and some deeply rooted held traditions. Um, and so introducing technology in and around competition is something that really required us to bring our stakeholders along, whether it was our rules and operations team um, or our athletes. But um, recognizing that in order to keep pace in today's sports environment, um, to, to maintain kind of our leading position uh, in women's golf, required us to think innovatively. Um, as we expanded our footprint, um, while we've played internationally during that 75 years at different times, there is um, probably a third of our schedule now um, are international events. So we're based in the U.S., but we're really a global tour. And that requires us to lean into and leverage technology. So um, on the one hand, I would say 
um, convincing people of the benefits of leveraging technology in the competition, whether that's um, our scoring system, whether that's um, you know other other things that we can do to kind of make our rules officials more efficient, um, course setup, um, how to how to set up the course more strategically for for drama and bringing technology to um, to that area of the business. Um, you know, I think there it took a little convincing early on, but once they realized how efficient we could be, how much better the product and the ultimate delivery of the experience um, and the competition for fans and for athletes, um, we were no longer pushing, they were pulling. And, and that's been, um, that has been a wonderful shift in the last five years is um, really, we have got a culture here of leaning into technology um, one of the benefits of being a smaller property is that we can take some chances, we can take some risks. Um, we're not, you know, I think we're, we are, while we are the leading women's tour, um, there, there's, a, there's a fan base out there that haven't even experienced the LPGA today. And so getting creative, delivering golf in a different way, being a little bit, bit more edgy with our content. Um, allowing, you know, testing different things to allow our fans to experience golf in a different way, whether it's different competition formats, um, whether it's the way that you actually view it, um, and the different type of graphics that we use to, to share stats and data um, in broadcast. You know, really kind of pushing, pushing the limits, I would say, is where we're going and leaning into some of the more, you know, innovative um, technologies that are being brought to sports today. Um, what we found also is that our athletes um, are, are incredible ambassadors for our sport. They're incredible ambassadors for our tour. And um, they are very committed and invested in the success of the LPGA. So they're willing to push those limits. They're willing to try things. They're willing to, um, you know, in, in the past, the ability to talk to an athlete in the middle of competition was unheard of. Our athletes now do walk and talks. You can understand how she's feeling, what she's thinking, how did that whole play? Um, you know, so I think um, really helping them, first of all, set the vision and then help them understand the value back to the organization and ultimately back to them as a member or member organization and a, and a member owned um, tour, you know, ultimately, this benefits them, it benefits the sport. And I think recognizing that um, has caused them and our team to really lean in to technology. So it's been, um, it's probably been an easier job for, for me and for our technology team than maybe in other places where people have to change the way they do business. Um, our teams are, um, are definitely all in and, um, and excited about the opportunity that technology can, can bring to the business. It's remarkable to hear that just in the last decade when, when you said, when you started, technology was not even in the top five strategic initiatives to the point now where you're leading with technology. It just, it just is remarkable to see how, you know, how technology is shaping, you know, the world around us. Um, and it's, it's just fascinating. So yeah, it, it goes without saying, I mean, every, every, every business is a technology business, right? Absolutely. Yeah. In, in today's world, uh, you, you don't function without it. So having a um, having a strategy around how to manage technology, how to how to leverage it and get the full value out of it for where you are in your technology journey and your digital transformation. Um, I think one of the things that one of the things that we say um, is, at least for us, technology is the great equalizer. You know, where we, we do collaborate with our industry peers and partners, but um, and as I mentioned, we're thrilled with um, the attention that women's sports is getting today and the investment um, and the recognition that these athletes are getting. We've known it for a long time, but I think the world has, wo you know, has finally woken up to it. Um, for us, bringing technology to bear um, is really leveling up. I mean, that allows us to kind of even the playing field, if you will. Um, our players are just, for example, in, in golf, you know, our, our athletes play the same courses that the men play. Um, you know, our athletes are playing essentially the same sport, um, same equipment, 
um, you know, same experience. And what technology has done is allow us to tell those stories and show how their performance compares um, to any any athlete, whether male, female, uh, professional, amateur. Um, you can you know you can truly understand and experience um, the level of their talent through technology. Couldn't agree more. So shifting gears a little, Liz, um, everyone encounters challenges and uh, even the most successful leaders have moments of setbacks. Could you share a time when a project or initiative didn't go as planned during your tenure as a CIO? And what lessons did you learn from that experience? Yeah, I think I would say, you know, there's, there's, uh, we've talked about, you know, the fact that we're a relatively smaller organization on the landscape. And so when technology made its way up the list of strategies, we had to be really smart about how we invested, um, you know, our resources, whether that's financial, human, um, you know, partner relationships, bringing those to bear. So I think establishing priorities and deciding how to go about about doing that. Do you buy? Do you build? Um, you know, how, how do you set yourself up for success in order to be agile going forward and, and adaptable and take advantage as we see, you know, the the pace of innovation, um, you know, just can, feels like it increases all the time. And so for us being smart about that um, and, and, and trying to map out that journey um, was a learning experience, I think, you know, wanting to jump in. And, and I would say um, probably one of the first things we did was, you know, you look at your core systems. So independence and uh, kind of controlling your own technical destiny. You know, we started out early on building systems ourselves, um, bespoke systems, because golf is unique in many ways. And, and so one size doesn't fit all because it's a rather unique sport with different formats and things. So tournament management systems, the way that we, um, we support the competitions, I think we built some of those systems early on. And we learned very quickly that our ability to keep up with that um, in a changing landscape with, um, I'm, I'm thrilled to say that we have some very long tenured teammates here, but as, as teams change over, being able to support, maintain, operate, develop and evolve those systems, you know, realizing that collaborations, leaning on partners um, made a lot more sense for us um, than building and developing bespoke systems. So. Um, lesson learned, happy to say early on, but also happy to say that we have wonderful partners that jumped in and now we've taken systems and um, without having to, to, to customize them so much that it, it leaves us a bit trapped. Um, we've been able to incorporate new technologies um, and, and bolt systems in as we need them to take advantage of new functionality um, to, to be able to continue to innovate and grow. So lesson learned, um, I think, for us early on is to um, maintain your flexibility. And you do that more by, by leveraging in and, and bolting in pieces and parts as opposed to kind of anchoring yourself um, in, in technology that is very quickly becoming antiquated. So that, that, that for us has been really important. Uh, is to be able to evolve sounds, and grow. Yeah, it sounds like, you know, that, 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 that journey mm -hmm. early on, there will be points, pivot points where you have to make those decisions. And how did you, was that you that saw that and convinced the rest of the organization that, hey, the direction that we need to head is this versus that? Um, or was it a collective team? you know, kind of insight and decision. Uh, how, how did that come about? Right? How, how, do you, how do you make a, come to a decision point like that and how did that work in, in this example for you? Yeah, I think um, this was something that I inherited. So um, kind of back to what your initial question of what was my journey here, I, I'm obviously not a technology specialist, um, but I, um, I have found a way to um, to work with our team and to connect different disciplines in with our strategies. And so um, I had the opportunity to step in and assume um, kind of a leadership role in technology when our, we were really struggling with the systems that were in place. Um, the business was frustrated. Um, there were, um, you know, a, a, I think 
having a sense of, um, of confidence about the systems that we were using um, was something that our business was really craving. And um, so, so for me, the, the good news was that people were, were starving for change, looking for change. Um, you know, we're starving, I think a little bit for something new and for some investment in that area. So, so when I walked in, there was definitely an appetite um, and an openness for it. Um, and, and really I, I looked to the team, um, to the team, we brought in some phenomenal um, leaders in this space who have, um, who have really done an exceptional job of transforming, kind of moving us from those older legacy systems into this new environment. Um, so building a team that you um, have trust in and confidence in their talents, their expertise, um, letting them do what they do well. Um, I think um, working with them and learning from history um, made kind of the convincing of which path to take a little bit easier for us um, because of some of the struggles that, that we were having at the time. Um, and, and really the pace um, of change, the, the, the change that we needed to see um, helped some of those decisions come a little bit quicker. Had we elected to, to build again, you know, the time to do that um, would have really, um, you know, forced us into some uncomfortable positions. And so I think the desire to move more quickly helped some of those decisions come faster because um, buying, um, you know, buying and, uh, and augmenting what we were doing with, with new systems to, um, to bolt into the base system, base systems, I think this was kind of a natural, um, a more natural uh, decision for us because of, because of some of the negative experience we'd had in the past. Um, but again, it, building a team um, that we could trust to make recommendations around that and, and building a culture of trust um, and the reputation of the tech team within our organization overall has allowed us to, to move much more quickly because the business, you know, the business knows um, that they've got a strong team there that's gonna do the work up front um, before they make the recommendation. So. Um, I think we've we've definitely got a, a positive a positive reputation in the organization, and hopefully we keep delivering against that. That's awesome. Uh, it sounds like you have built an amazing relationship with the line of business, uh, and it sounds like you know both both the organizations, your organization, and your business work together in in kind of creating and curating these experiences through technology, um, and. It is so important that you say that, you know, at the end of the day, technology is there to enable the business to succeed, right? Um, and what advice would you give for, uh, you know, IT leaders out there that, you know, are working in technology and, you know, how, how, to, how to curate that relationship, how to nurture that relationship with the business and, you know, don't have the business see like, you know, IT is not there to, to support them. Yeah, um, I think maybe one of the similarities um, in this role in terms of the perspective of legal and the perspective of technology, um, you know, the business can tend to look at those departments and, you know, see them as barriers or see them as hurdles. Uh, they have to get through them or they have to convince them or they have to wait in line, um, you know, to get support from them. So I, I think one of the one of the things that that has allowed our legal and our technology teams to be um, so successful and so well thought of as business partners is that that's the, the approach that we take is we're we are your partner um, this is a team these are not individual siloed departments and so we need to understand your piece of the business we need to understand first the overall strategy the vision for the business um, and, and how it works. And then as we serve our clients across departments, you know, throughout the organization, understanding what's important to them, how do they fit into that broader vision and how can we best support them to achieve what they need to um, so that it all works together. So I think we're, we, we definitely approach this. We are, we are support and service um, teams. Uh, definitely, but we also can move the business forward and be part of that strategic growth um, if we have the right mindset. And I'd say that that's really been 
um, division that I've set for my teams. That's been the way that, that these teams approach our business. And I think they really see us as their partners. They look to us for advice. Um, you know, come to us early, come to us often, let us help you be successful and achieve what your deliverables are, whatever department you're in. Um, and, and I think when we work that way and we work collaboratively, um, everybody wins and you build those relationships of, of trust. Um, when, when they see you kind of locking arm in arm with them to try to achieve their goals um, and not just, you know, n not just be um, focused on the legal issues only, the technology issues only. Um, how can we help you do even what you do even better? Maybe we have ideas, you know, to help you um, advance your initiatives, um, your deliverables, whether it's a whether it's a marketing and brand, whether it's an operations, um, whether it's our finance team, you know, who's trying to support, um, you know, players that live and play all around the world. Um, you know, how can we help you do what you do better? Um, and I think any leader, regardless of discipline, um, whether it's um, technology, legal, you know, or, or otherwise, I think the key is to understand the business. What are the business drivers? What matters to the business? And how do you fit into that? And then you can lead your teams, you know, behind that. I think that's our job as leaders is to really set the vision um, establish those strategic priorities. Um, and when you understand what you're trying to accomplish, you can also help manage the risks and help people make better decisions. That's brilliant. And that, with that, you know, it brings me to my last question, Liz, um, you know, just staying on that line, um, what advice would you give to an aspiring IT professional who wants to make a significant impact in their career? How can they develop the skills and mindset needed to lead in today's fast-paced, technology-driven environment? Great question. Um, and as one who is not a technology specialist, um, I would say, you know, first, understand what's important to you. Um, you know, you to, to be truly successful and to be happy, I think, in what you're doing. That, that's ultimately a success, right? Is not only um, achievement of, of goals and and professional um, outcomes, but also, you know, to, to enjoy what you do uh, and to be good at it. And I think understanding, um, you know, thinking about wh where is it that you want to be and what are those essential skills that you're gonna need to have to do that. You know, for, um, for me as a leader and someone who's always wanted to be on a team and in a business, um, understanding what's coming. What's happening in that? What's happening in your environment? Um, if you're going to be in sports, what are the new innovations? Not just in sports, but outside of sports that could help um, it, that have an application in this industry. So um, I think the main thing I would probably say is relationships. Ultimately, um, having relationships with partners, uh, with teammates within your business, um, within your industry. Um, I think is um, it, it is really probably underpins everything I do. I think it's allowed me to to achieve you know the the success that I have uh, and enjoy the experience that I have the most is um, is through my relationships. And I think um, networking and being connected will help you understand you know what's coming next. Um, will help you navigate moments that you're in. And so I think, you know, establishing and building those networks um, early and then maintaining them is um, and the, the relationships ultimately also um, are, are what have led to some of my most positive experiences. They're, they're friends and um, not only colleagues, but friends. And so for me, I would say um, think early about establishing that network and um, expanding it and maintaining it. And uh, those relationships will not only teach you, but you know, make make the journey a lot more enjoyable along the way. That's very inspiring. Thanks, Liz. Um, you know, thanks for sharing your incredible journey and insights with us today. Uh, your blend of leadership in both technology and law, along with your vision for future of golf, is truly inspiring. 